Hello, welcome. It's Hardlore time. How are you, Bo? So good. Good. Me too. Um, the the votes are in. We yeah. we left today's episode up to the viewers. We're gonna do this once a month. By golly, was it close? It really was. It was it's, like a it's, it's like a one percent <laughs> difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. I like knowing what the people want. Yeah. Because um, the, the, before the, that, Colin. Oh. I want I want to talk about dead body. I want to talk about being oh. on the road, which we did a little bit before my computer died. Right. Right. This is take and two. speaking of that, let me publicly apologize for the audio last week. <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> Everything should sound perfect now. Yeah, uh, yeah. it happens <laughs> to Bo. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is a story. This is a, you know a podcast about stories from tour. I just I just did the longest tour I've done in five years. <laughs> Four shows, baby. <laughs> What was uh what was the best one? I know it's, it's I think Vegas. Like, I think Vegas was the best show. Which like, dude, it's crazy. You and I have played Vegas over a decade ago. I have and like exclusively played a house where crack uh, meth is like being it's like in the oven being cooked, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Like they have a batch ready to go mm-hmm. for the next guy. And you're, they're waiting for you to take your gear out and finish your set, and then they give the guy the meth that they just baked. Um, it's wild and awesome to be able to say that, yeah, Vegas was the best show. That's Vegas, crazy. it's a very young scene. Like, teenagers spin kicking is my is the best. There's nothing more inspiring to me. Simi Valley is also skewing very young, where we just played. Which is like Where? not a place I grew up playing ever. Where is that? Is that Forty northern? minutes away. It's like it's oh. Ventura County. Okay. Um, but it's like there's literal twelve year olds in the pit spin kicking, and I could hear them after the set like counting how many spin kicks they did. <laughs> and it added five years to my life. So yeah, had a great time. I'm loving being in a fucking local ass band. You know? Yeah, that's cool. Just a that's local. Funny. Local as fuck, dude. <laughs> Uh, we went to Vegas. Uh, uh, we gambled. Yes. Enough said. <laughs> you know how I say never stop gambling? Yeah. I've heard that once or twice. I should have stopped gambling. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening to this, eventually stop gambling is the new, <laughs> yeah, is the new slogan. Eventually stop gambling. But the today we're here. Yeah, what are we talking about? The, the viewers voted... They wanted to hear about Hardlore's favorite underrated hardcore bands. Or adjacent. Or adjacent. I My list is 1,000% HC. Wow. You're going to have 000. a bunch of shit. I feel like I feel underprepared. Um, now, let us clarify what we mean by underrated. Yes. Does that, does that mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, you're right. You're 100% Does right. that mean at the time they weren't appreciated? Does that mean that even though they were huge, maybe at one point people aren't talking about them now? Yeah, I think I think it could right? mean I think it could mean all of those things. Like yeah, I think so too. Good. Um, and maybe some maybe they kill in their hometown and nowhere else. Right, Ex- and, and which is a, oh, a got, prime got, example. I got, from I got my billions list. of those. So <laughs> yeah. uh, this is gonna be. I had a lot of fun putting this together. Um, and some of these like are huge bands in their own right or now people are like what yeah not knowing right. how fucking dope they were in their prime okay good I've, I've got some i'm gonna say some and people are gonna be like what are you talking about that's like one of the most popular bands of that era and it's like yeah nobody's talking about them anymore really think about it you know? yeah the, you and you know i might i might hear one you do and be like what and then hear yeah, yeah, yeah. but i think i think mine is is defendable okay um why don't you uh should we, should we rip it ready my first pick I, I i wanted to troll you and and do something silly and be like little band called half heart or something <laughs> you know what I mean? uh my first pick <laughs> let me crack open it crack it open we're cracked all right colin's first pick for mm-hmm. underrated hardcore bands 25 to life <laughs> and hear me out Despite what 
they say about Rick or the band's legacy or anything. I don't feel like any, yeah, none of that really. Brother, strength through unity and keeping it real are like objectively incredible hardcore records. Hmm. And you can see what you look back at flyers in that time. It's like 25 to life. Hate breed. <laughs> yeah, Madball, yeah, like the, yeah, the biggest yeah. bands ever under them. Yeah. So You're, I, I, would, I would say they are an underrated band if like maybe that. by their own by their own yeah. fault. <laughs> Dude, somebody DM me the other day and asked if if I remember um a thing called Chubby Fresh Fest. Chubby Fresh had a fest? Yeah, and it happened in Illinois. Oh wow. Why did he do in that? In like a, a western suburb. And there was no ins and outs, and it was like a, a all day. Oh wow! And I just sat in this venue. But the reason I bring it up, and and dude, the lineup was crazy. It was like Terror, Integrity, Two Thousand, Ringworm, Mental. Um, I think Twenty Five to Life. And to, the, if not, to the listeners, Chubby Fresh uh, played drums in Integrity, One Life Crew. Mm-hmm. Now he's, uh, you know, a listener. Is he? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> well, he did a fest. Well, look at Rick the One was... Life Crew Facebook page, and then you know you'll you'll get an idea of what they're what he's about now. Um, Rick was there, is why I bring it up at all. Okay. I don't remember if Twenty Five to Life played because I wasn't. Again, this was like peak Bridge Nine Bow. Like, okay. Even Terra, I was like, eh, that's kind of metal, you know. Like I and I didn't get Ringworm, dude. Furnace. Oh my wet god. In his hair. You are everything you say just proves the Michael Hayesness of your personality. <laughs> Terror, I didn't think I was, it was gonna work. <laughs> I dude, I, I left high school with a friend who could drive because I couldn't yet. I was very young. Okay. Like I left we went from high school to this fest. Mm. Um and Rick was had his distro there and I bought a straight edge sticker from him. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. I no, don't Rick, if they played it. Rick, Rick I bought my own albums from Rick, you know? <laughs> But 25 to Life, still at the end of the day, underrated. Uh, keeping it real, strength through unity. I would personally recommend the song Short Fuse. I which love is a the song thing. I got to remember to do that with my Yeah, we, we're going we're gonna to leave you with a song just in case the songs aren't on streaming and aren't mm-hmm. in the official Hard Lore Underrated Bands playlist below. Mm-hmm. Right. So Short Fuse, listen to the song, hard as fuck. Here we go. Um... I had a question and I forgot it. All right. Perfect. Mine. Um, I'm going back in time. Mm-hmm. Fear. Oh. The punk band. Jesus Fear. Christ. Yeah. Dude, I, no, I think the record, uh-huh. the record is like an incredible record. It is. I, I think it's like really weird. And yeah, I guess what is fear unique. drawing nowadays? You know, that's what I'm saying is like, I think fear played riot fest recently. And mm, what, yeah, uh, but like if they're playing like punk rock bowling, like how many people are coming? You know, you, you know, what's funny is like, I wouldn't be there. No, I no. Would, I'd go, but fear, fear ran shit for a while. Yeah. Dude, I mean, they were a big, they were on fucking Saturday night live. Yeah. They were like a big deal back in the day. And I don't really think anybody gives a shit about, we got to get uh John Belushi on the show. To, to wait. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> to, to, do you to know, tell us about fear. Do you know, uh, what movie Lee Ving, the singer of fear was in? No, he played Mr. Body in clue. Really? That's Lee Ving. That's cool. So it's Tim Curry. Leaving. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, the rec. I mean, the record goes goes crazy. It's 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 all, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a timeless punk classic. Exactly, and that's kind of what I want to like. It's like we were saying. There's we're gonna say things like Twenty Five to Life was a good pick from you. Yeah, Fear I think is one of those ones where people are going, "What are you talking about?" But it's like, when was the last time you saw someone in at like a hardcore show and if you're in just shirt, a Fear the record shirt, you, you know what I mean, or like yeah. a more beer shirt or anything. So. Mine's fear. Yeah. I would choose. I don't care about you. I love that song. Okay, that would be the song I would say to check out. It's definitely streaming. Yeah, I'm a New More York's all right if if you like saxophones, man. Dude, but that's the dude. that's the hit, you know. And you know I hate saxophone. Uh, you do. I really hate a horn in rock. Yeah. but band rocks. Yeah. Good pick, Bone. 
Thanks. My next pick. Every single, I feel like every pick I make, there's going to be a, sm- a schmear of bullshit. No, from, it's a from great pick, you say. Great pick, Bowen. <laughs> Bowen with a great pick. Uh, my next pick, band from Japan. Mm. Uh, this, and to me, bands like, this band is called Judgment. I'll just get that out of the way. Band's called Judgment. Band, I, don't, I, I don't think I've ever heard of them. Well, you'd love them. Okay. Judgment, bands like Judgment, Deathside, Bastard, all fronted, all exemplified that, to me, something that they do makes them better at writing punk music. Ooh. There's something about it that just like, you- hey, we've been nuked twice. Like, s- war fucking sucks. They haven't, they all come from this standpoint where they have an actual thing to say, you know? Mm. And it like comes across lyrically, even in their second, third language. Yeah. Uh, right. The artwork is just like, yo, these are real motherfuckers with an, with like a provable historical thing to base their entire ideologies on. Uh, Judgment, they put out a bunch of two song releases, which I think is the coolest thing. Uh, we haven't done our EP or seven inch thing yet. That'll happen. But my, uh, that's my favorite way to consume music is like a taste. I don't like a long, it's, but the thing is it's usually. hard. It's, it's easy to say in retrospect, me finding and Taylor finding these five, two song things. Cause it's like, but, but starting as a new band, releasing a two thong, two thong, two song thing, <laughs> You can't get people hooked on that. You can't get get anybody to yeah. give a shit. But yeah. like three, four, five. Oof. I yeah, That's I could do I five like. songs f- yeah. forever. That sounds That's awesome. My favorite. But yeah. um, process and the situation is a two song release. I would find those both back to back. They'll rock your ass off, especially wow. you. Wow. My cousins. I, I, I will. I mean, I listen to our playlists. You know what's so funny is the last one. Mm-hmm. We, we said this in the breakdowns thing, but like the first one was like a little more metal, a little more heavy. And then the last one was like mostly hardcore. Yeah. And like that playlist fucking. Oh, it's incredible. So, this it, playlist it, from on. I don't know how, how much of this is on streaming, unfortunately. So mm-hmm. like you might have to YouTube a lot of this. Um, But this is a fucking bang in playlist. <laughs> this is like the best playlist <laughs> I've ever heard right here. Uh, but yeah, Judgment is my second pick for underrated band. I need to notate um, the songs that I'm picking as well. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, so when I was doing this, I, I looked at like my vinyl collection mm-hmm. to try and be uh, inspired. Sure. Um, here's one. This is a prime example of like somebody's gonna say, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Mm-hmm. But it's it's really true. Is mental, mental, mental at this the is time. A what the fuck you're talking are you talking about? Because they ran the world exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like, not only um, do I think you don't really like we. I'll see people of like our era in mental shit. Yeah, but like that's kind of it. You don't really see yeah, yeah. younger people, newer people in mental shit. Sure. But also, like, stylistically, that style of hardcore is, I think, not as popular It's right been now. phased out. Yeah. Right? So, like, it's weird to think about, what, 2004? Mm-hmm. About them being the biggest band? Yeah. And and there's this is, this is like a... There's a drawback to sounding that unique, you know? Because right. when somebody really, when, when somebody's yeah. doing mental, the first thing I think is fuck this. It's kind of your um, no warning thing. Yeah, it's like you're you're not gonna do a better version of this thing. Do something else. And I'm a hypocrite because I do, I do a, a worse version of five different. Things. <laughs> so it's like, but but there's certain things where you can get away with that, and you can you can you can change it and improve on it and do your own thing. But there's there's no way to imitate mental, right? Um, so like, yeah. So uh, I don't I don't think people realize that like there was a time when mental would 
set up their merch and they were just it would just all be sold out every yeah. show, every fest, whatever. Like they were the band. The proto, I don't really know. Proto merch band. Isn't merch band such I've I think I've said this on here before, but merch band is such a hilarious phrase. It's it's funny and stupid. Because it's just a, a band people like and want to wear uh, their yeah, stuff. Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I do think that, like, if people are lined up for merch and not watching a band, that kind of sucks. But it's not their fault. But it's not their fault. Exactly. Like, no. I'm sorry, dude. You know, it's like it's like Gulch is, like, a good example, of, yeah. right? They were probably the, the last, like, notable one. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, people, they made a design that people want. That the world wanted. <laughs> The entire planet wanted. Mental was um, for sure that if you had if a shirt said "Mental Crew," motherfuckers would be rioting in the streets to be part of the Mental Crew. You know, so popular, yeah. and like also like dude, like we we don't have to get too far into it, but like popularized like how people dressed in shoes and like sneakers. It was like a whole thing, yeah. you know, and and that's very much gone by the wayside. Um, for better or worse, you know, whatever. I yeah. loved mental. I would say uh, History 101 is a great, great song. Opens uh, Get an Oxygen Tank, which was the first piece of vinyl I ever purchased. Wow, hard lore. Hard lore. Hard lore. Three. Great pick, Bowen. <laughs> dude, fuck off, dude. It's what? Funny. I want you to check out this band, fucking Calipers from Rome. They're sick. Just what do you mean? I don't know, pick. like, like, like some of these are going to be obvious. I didn't. I said great pick, Bowen, and you stuck your finger up my ass. What's you your problem? Get your finger out of there. My next pick. This, this is. I feel like uh-huh. I'm going to say this, and the state of New York is going to throw their hats in the air and 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 roar roarous applause. Okay. The band is called Cold Front. Oh, I think I they I think they are the single most underrated New York hardcore band. Amazing. That's a. I mean, oh, I like that. Clean vocals. Mm. A little bit, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting, creative, unique riffs. Hard. They did a lot of things that people are doing now better than anybody else ever has. They don't have much music out. There's a demo and like a. I don't know if it's an LP or but like that's, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it, it's like a it's like a demise situation where it's like they have a bunch of. We'll get to demise later, but there a <laughs> bunch of different things that people call an LP. I don't know. Uh, all I what know is every song that? is good. What? Sorry. What do you think causes a band to be underappreciated at their time? I think timing is a lot of it. And just like not, I don't know if you're just like not in with the right dudes or something or just the internet didn't, or like I, my perception is that they're underrated and everybody there is like, nah, it was the shit, yo. Mm. It was at CB's. Um, Which, which works into our criteria. It does. Yeah. But uh, draw the line, which is on the demo and the other one. I would listen to that. I think most people will be like, yeah, I get it. Wow. Good pick, Colin. (laughs) <laughs> and to that Cold I say that's, I a very, that's a good pick thank you hmm. was anybody in Cold Front in other don't know. bands or don't know. do you know you don't know I've n- they're one of those things I, I just never I never did the a lot of times I'm so curious about like okay who are these guys and then yeah. sometimes I like a band so much and won't check a single thing about them oh I like that too. I couldn't yeah. tell you who wrote what on Master Killer you know, my favorite yeah, thing and ever. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just a great mystery to me. It's a great conundrum. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. I got a good one. Um, a lot of mine I'm realizing are <laughs> kind of of that time of this same time period. So maybe it's me trying to relive the glory days, but 2003 band called. So be it. Tell me Remember about. So, so be, be it. it. Are they European? No, they're not. They're like, um, who were the the dudes, the brothers? I think who were in Think I Care. Oh, okay. So it's Boston. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, definitely Boston. I think, and I don't know if DFJ was. No, I think the dude who sang for R and R played drums. Maybe I might be getting this totally wrong. I apologize, but they were like, um, 
uh, Shumsky. It was the Shumsky, right, right, Shumsky right, right, brothers. Right, right, right. Um, and no DFJ. Okay, just checked his cocks. Um, but they had like only a demo and then two seven inches and like that's it. Mm. And it's just like hard. I remember I, I only saw him once, but dude played drums and like had like hi hat, snare, kick, a crash, and a tom. And that was like the the whole kit. Oh wow, he's one of those. You know, like yeah, like Kublai Khan style, like super minimalist. Right. Um, very hard. I believe like one thing was like straight edge, and then one thing was after not being straight edge. Mm. I think if I'm which one I did you be, like more? What do you think, dude? I lo- I love the straight edge one. It, it's nice. got a guy swinging a chain. Nice. He's xed up. It's very hard. Hard. Um, the first song on that, it's the self titled record, is called Split Level Head. Mm-hmm. Super fucking hard. Very short lived band, like only like five years or so. Wow. But like in the vein of that kind of um, Boston thing. So like okay. the non mental side, the more I think I care. Great pick, Bowen. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm ex- I'm excited to check out So Be It. I never heard him. Isn't that fun? One, yeah. I got one. You yeah. get to show me stuff I never heard. I think you could actually like. I don't know how well it holds up, but I think you could actually. Like, to Bo, it does though. You know. Fuck yeah. Okay. My next pick. All the way from Deutschland. Mm. Rikers. Dude, that's so funny. Why? When I was on Spotify doing like related, just uh-huh. trying to see if I was forgetting any bands, they they were on. They came up, yeah, uh, on one of my later picks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they could tour Germany right now, like over Hatebreed or something. It's that kind of thing. Really, listen to the song. Okay, the song. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. The song is called Stranglehold. The one I picked. It's from a, a record called First Blood. The intro is fucking hard <laughs> as shit, dude. And he goes, "Bring out the stranglehold," and uh, like in full <laughs> German accent. The riff is insane. Da 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 da, bum bum, bum bum. Hard as shit. Uh, the band's hard as fuck. They sound like they're from New York. Uh, yeah, Rikers, dope as hell. Do you know when they were around? Like what era? Nineties, two thousands. I think they still like. I think Beatdown Hardware put out like a collection of stuff. In the past 10 years. So they're still, I think they toured, they did a persistence tour in the past few years too. Really? So they're out there. They're, they're still yeah. here. They might be listening. I don't know. Wow. Riker Stranglehold. <laughs> Hard as shit, dude. That's a good one. All right, hit it. I got a Chicago man. Finally. Um, finally. Yeah. There's a few Chicago bands in here, which I think like that's bound to happen. Right. I got my California stuff at the end. Yeah. Right. My nepotism uh, should I, stuff. Should I save mine then? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, the band is called Wound Up. They played a lot in Chicago. Excuse me. They're very um very much on the, the punk hardcore side. Mm-hmm. A guy named Donnie sang, and they were very scary. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I think they only had like a cassette and a seven inch, you know, really oh. again, like not a lot put out very punk, very, but like very hard and very just like good, mm. fast shit. Sure. And they, they were a band that I don't know if they ever played out. I, I legitimately don't know. They were like already established when I was like first getting into hardcore. Wow. And like first going to local shows, but like they're sick. I think Matt might listen and um they well, had a bunch and, of like, and like were they a band when you were a kid or they were no they so they were around but i was like 15, 14 15 okay you know like ve- like fresh right donnie one time ran into me uh during my eraser and bruised my hip <laughs> what i just had a bruised hip <laughs> he killed me <laughs> that's fun uh but yeah wound up um self-titled the song and it's uh, it's good. The, the song's called Wound Up. Yeah. Oh, badass. Wound you know, you know, up. I love, I love yeah, that. I know you do. I got a, I got a little sticker right here. <laughs> I'd rather be listening to Wound Up by Wound Up from the record, uh, self-titled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if if it's on streaming or anything. Um, well, we'll see when we're putting the playlist. Uh, yeah. You know, highly recommend. My next pick, all the way from Down Under. Oh wow. This is, they're like the Chromags of Australia. 
Band called Mind Snare. Great band. Great band. I uh, did a split with Ringworm, which is like, how cool is that? Coolest. I would have to imagine that helped Ringworm in Australia, honestly. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Right. Um, I would recommend the song Bulldozed. Hmm. You'll hear that it's just like dope, metallic, hardcore, and then they eventually got like even more metallic. Uh, but it's exactly what you want from a band called Mind Snare. You'll see the logo and you'll know exactly what they're about. But they're like, oh. I think they're other than fucking Packway, they're they're like the biggest Australian hardcore band. Dude, Actual cool hardcore is, band is what you just said. Um, seeing a logo and just knowing, dude, oh. that's so cool. It's the best. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, quick. Uh, asterisk on my pick for that wound up song. It's the I, I was misremembering. The song is called "Fuck Fashion." Anyway, it's not called one. It's not so it negates not, that no, entire fun anecdote uh, that we just had. Is, together. is dear beloved friend of the show Aaron uh, Osborne? Aaron Osborne involved with Mindstorm? No, he he's in extortion now, which is insane. Mm -hmm. I think that that's like people here like oh, you're in extortion, mate. All right. How you going? Uh, but no, he's not in Mind Snare. I, I, he should be. So Mind Snare, if you're listening. <laughs> I got this guy named Aaron Osborne. He's from Canberra. You're going to love him. He can play all your instruments. We're so going to see good. him this weekend. Oh, can't wait. I might see him tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, that's my next pick. Mind Snare, Bulldozed. Check him out. Very good. That was a good pick. You're... you're you really bat a thousand. I tell you what, you have a um, a Rolodex. I do in your brain. I'll tell you I, what. I I everything I do is of a Slumdog Millionaire <laughs> uh, state. You know, mm -hmm. every every experience in my life le led to me going. I I'm gonna save this fact. You know? Yeah. Hold on um, for something. What, we had like what four topics was the poll for mm -hmm. this week. Yeah. So like when we decided on the four topics, I like outlined picks for all of them just right. in case, right? And I thought I was like, I was like, I got this one. You're fucking, you got it. <laughs> Colin clears sadly. <laughs> what is what's the what's the what do the kids say? Oh, Colin clears. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good pick, Colin. What's yours, Bo? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have some on here that like in hindsight are so stupid. Uh, I, I need them. I'll pick one from Belgium. I've talked about him before. I love him to death. Rise and fall from nice. Ghent Bell. That's a great pick because the kids dude, don't into, know rise and fall. They don't dude. And into oblivion is like incredible. Yeah. And I've, I know I've said it before. I've talked about it before, but I don't I don't think they ever put out anything that isn't like worth listening to. Mm -hmm. Into Oblivion is like my pick. It was like a sea change when I when we first heard it. In that like it perfectly blended so many things. I heard Into Oblivion and thought I was hearing like a secret Cleveland band. Like a secret Ex classic Cleveland band. Exactly. Because there's it's one song really where a, where a guy sings and in like it, it just is Human Furnace, but it's not. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was. It was like they got him. I can't believe they got him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they didn't at yeah. all. It's probably some um, fucking Austrian guy or something. But dude, it's great all the way through. Dude, you want to talk about sequencing? Oh, great sequence. It's like perfect. Yeah, there are songs that go right into each other that fit perfectly. It's fucking. I haven't heard it in probably ten years, dude. Um, I listened to it a few months ago and I remember going like, holy shit. Mm. Like it's still good. Yeah. It's still, it I'm excited to hear it on the playlist. Yeah. It could come out today and it would smash. Right. The art, great artwork too. Great artwork. Mr. Bannon. Yeah. Um, just, just, yeah. Just your, your old boss, Mr. Bannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jacob. Um, so yeah, and it came out on Death Wish. And you stole your logo from them. We we the one of your logos. We were blessed. Yeah, with permission. There you go. Um, I can't so believe just, the Live Nation Harm's Way logo. Being able to put it in the 
episode. Yeah, I can't believe Live Nation would do that to you guys. I'm going to sue your ass. I'm going to sue you, Live Nation, on behalf of Arms Way. It's on site with Live Nation's logo team. Um, I'm going to pick just the opening track to Into Oblivion is Fork Tongues. Nice. Great song. Isn't that the song with the, with the fake ringworm guy? I don't think so. Okay. One of them has a guy where you're going to be like, they got him. They got and let me tell you now, they didn't. They didn't get the human thermos. <laughs> great pick, yeah. not an ironically great pick. Okay, for the yeah the first one. Um, no, it's not first one. I just never heard half of those things, which is good. That means they're underrated. So you're doing good. Put your tongue away. Uh, my next pick. The the other good <laughs> crossover band. Because who's they're the fir- who's the first carnivore. Okay. <laughs> There are two. Uh, the other great all-time crossover band. None other than Crumb Suckers. Ah. Uh, that's you, a really good pick. You must visit an album called Life of Dreams. Fuck, and I, I implore you to listen to the entire thing front to back. But if you're if you don't, if you're pressed for time, first two tracks just sit there and trapped. You'll be like, you'll get a complete understanding of what you're getting into. Hard riffs that you cannot play. <laughs> cool ass vocals with cool ass patterns and cool ass lyrics and hard pits. What more do you want? Were they, do you know anything about like the band? I think uh, some of them moved to Florida and are propane as well. Propane. Oh, okay. okay. You know the band? Yeah, yeah. So are, are, were they like... They played they, a Black and Blue Bowl like a few years ago. Oh, no shit. And it okay. looked like the dopest thing of all time. Did they play shows with other... Oh, yeah. Hardcore bands 100%. The they're, they're Long Island, though. Gotcha. So... Gotcha. This is, this is before Backtrack merged the boroughs. <laughs> you know? <laughs> before Backtrack single-handedly merged before Long the, Island and New York Hardcore. Before... Uh, uh, Vitalo before James Vitalo the, single the handedly room. merged <laughs> the boroughs. You think I'm joking, but Long Island was its own identity before old Jimmy V had his say. He said, Hey, why don't we bring them together? Hey, hey we'll have a catch. Hey, fuck yourself. Uh, Crumb Suckers, Life of Dreams, certified underrated. The one, one of two good crossover bands. I'm obviously I'm being facetious there, but yeah, of course, Crumb Suckers. Uh, is, I remember is the other one of the first one. things I remember about your brother was him liking Crumb Suckers and being like surprised. You see that? Yeah, that's I do. A, that's a Crumb Sucker. That's a Crumb Suckers poster that's older than me. Wow! Right there, just withering away in my little office <laughs> in a twenty dollar frame. Yeah, yeah. But Crumb Suckers, incredible. Perfect band. Listen to Life of Dreams. Uh, classic think- Sean Taggart artwork. There you go. Which yeah. obviously we were very inspired by and used and, and worked with Sean Taggart, and that was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I yeah. can imagine so. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was ever, that was everything to us. I think so far that's your best pick uh, it, when it, when considering what underrated like mm-hmm. means. Mm-hmm. I think that's so far your best pick. Sure. And they've all been good, so that's that's really impressive. <laughs> yeah. Good pick, Colin. Thank you, thank you. What's next? Um, I'm, this is the one where I was like, "Can we please do adjacent?" <laughs> band is, is not a hardcore band, sure. Um, but they did record with front of the show Kirk Blue. I'm listening. Um, they are called Beast Milk. Oh, you love this fucking band. Huh? I love this fucking. You band. drank the Beast Milk all day. All goddamn day. I don't think people really know about them. They were they were kind of short lived. They had to change their name, right? They had to change their yeah. I guess like certain people fucking left or something. I don't really know. I, I think like the main songwriter left, but the singer stayed. What whatever. I don't yeah. know the the thing. But they have they have a couple seven inches that came up before the first LP. And the first LP is called Climax. Right. And then they changed their name after that. Beast Climax, Mill is, Climax like, is crazy. Yeah, it, it's it's all obviously very on the nose. Yeah. Like they, it's all intentional. Um, it, the I can only describe it as like Morrissey singing for the Misfits in a echo chamber. That's good. Recorded by Baloo. It if this band 
I, they were fucked by their timing, you know, because they were poised to be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. And then obviously something happened internally. But if they came, if they came out, if Beast Milk fucking emerged now from the shadows, they'd be playing Coachella. Dude, that's that's a good point. And also, I think the name probably fucked them. Yeah, but the, to me, the name is what makes me want to hear it. Oh, good point. I go, that's Valid. disgusting. Put it on. <laughs> they changed it to Grave Pleasures. Grave, which interested. is, dis- which is that's that's disgusting. Turn it off, you know? <laughs> that's Pupil Slicer, to the energy to me, which no you. diss to Pupil Slicer. It, but it's your name is so effective that I'm sickened by it. <laughs> um, I will choose the song Genocidal Crush. Okay. Very catchy. Noted very and Check out Ben's book. Check out this record. It's awesome. I will. In the playlist below. My next picks. I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple. Uh, I'm going to go by region for, for a minute here. Fun. Because I, I had to pick from all of Troy core, mm. which in itself is completely underrated. You know? Yeah. What the did whole I thing? listen to the other day? I texted you. You listened to dying breed, Bo, which is my next pick. Excellent pick. Excellent excellent record this is this was Mm life-changing and i heard it as a like own borderline adult yeah i I was 35 (laughs) (laughs) and you're like oh this is just perfect hardcore music yeah and it it really honestly it is it is i didn't know yeah that it was like singy yeah it's it's like post pantera hardcore you know, yeah, like they yeah. they're all doing Pantera, but in a, in a hardcore perspective. The when it rains, it pours. There is a lesson to learn from it all. Uh, that's there. What's crazy is I put nothing to prove on the best breakdowns playlist mm. uh, by by mere chance, not knowing it was the only song on streaming. No shit. Yeah. So I think I have to put that in the playlist. But if you have access to the record, I believe it's on Bandcamp. The song yeah. Marked Man. Nice. Good God. I listened to it on YouTube. Oh. Yeah. Obviously, they have a song called God's Hate, which inspired me to do something. So <laughs> that you should know, tell you. I never you. knew that. I yeah. didn't know that. That's it. Wow. It goes, God, and it goes, nah, I don't want to give away the rest. But yeah, check out <laughs> Dying Breed. Uh, I'm going to do one more pick as like a co-pick of this one, okay? Mm-hmm. Because Section 8... Their classic record, Nine Ways to Say I Love You, Good just guy. went up on streaming for the first time. Oh, did, did you? How long ago? Days. Yeah, because when I was, when I listened to Dying Breed, the first thing I tried to listen to was that. Was like, Section 8. It, it so went up sense. like maybe a week ago. That makes perfect sense. And uh, the first song will get, if you like, and I'm just putting this for, for hard lore's sake. If you like my band, but the one I sing in, You're going to hear this and go, okay, I get it. Uh, Broken Glass Memories. Mm. You'll see, you'll get it. You get the melodic voice. He only, he does, he doesn't do many notes, but them notes he does, he does flawlessly. Okay. I got you. And then when he goes into the, it's fucking badass. (laughs) Uh, This is, this is like a perfect, this is a, this is a, 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 a landmark album for me as a guy. And for upstate New York, they, I guarantee, I bet you they could draw 10 to 1,000 people <laughs> in Albany. <laughs> they could, you they know, could outdraw WWE in Albany, I bet. Do you know um, the story behind the the cover? The like what, insane album cover? No, I don't. It's, it's truly one of the wildest. It, it's like, very it, of its time, though. Just like a crazy guy like a holding, holding flowers. Like a boy guy? Yeah. So I think I think the back it's funny that like and I've done this too where the full the album cover is only half the the story and the back cover is like the rest of it you know like the preacher man seven inch is me in a priest shirt on the front right and right. on the back I'm crossing my fingers so it's like that should have been the real art that's the real message it's like JK yeah I yeah, don't yeah. believe it either I'm a priest What's on the back of the of the section eight one I think he's holding flowers or holding a weapon. Oh, because gotcha. he's got flowers on the front. Yeah, and I think he and has a, like a gun or a, a knife or something. Sinister grin. Yeah, it's very sinister. He's got he's got a weapon for sure. 
Okay. So it's like that's the message. It's not that's the ninth way to say I love you. You know, murder. <laughs> So check out Section 8. It's finally on streaming. Why is my nose so red? What the hell? You know what's funny is is you're looking red. I think you've probably been outside, and I'm looking ghostly. I have been outside. I played a show outdoors yesterday. It was bullshit. Anyway. Do you like playing outdoors? Oh, my God. I'd rather die. Yeah. yeah. I would rather die than do that ever (laughs) again. But alas, I will be doing it in a month and a half. (laughs) How'd the bass feel? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm not even trying to, to, to you know, fart my yeah. own ass here, but like Dunnable, that Dunnable bass feels like I played bass for the first time. In oh, a good way. Like, I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh, that's way. what a bass is supposed to feel like. You right. know? It's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. It's, it's really nice to have the thing. Like, yeah. whatever it is, once you're just like, oh, there we go. It made me go, okay, can I order a guitar immediately? Because this is just like, well, okay, if this feels this good, then what do your guitars feel like? You know, this is not a sponsored thing at all. Yeah. I just like it. What's your next part? I am going to go back to Chicago. Okay. With another another band that was has been around much longer. I think it's still technically, like, around, but they're just very inactive, is the Repos. Nice. The repos, there was like, um, you know how there's like groups of people who all do bands, mm-hmm. right? Like all the Boston guys and you guys, and mm-hmm. like blah, blah, blah. They were a group with like, um, I don't know if they shared members or whatever, but it was like Punch in the Face, 14 or Fight, the repos, um, even that wound up band, like what all kind of were kind of, in this like cloud. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but the repos were like always the coolest, Mm -hmm. always like, I don't know. They, they, it's so difficult to be like authentically punk to be like authentically like DIY, you know what I mean? Like, and, and like successful at it and make it cool. They did it really well. Um, they also eventually at one point covered all of We're Not In This Alone by Youth of Today. That's Just crazy. Put it out on a record, covered the whole thing. It was fucking awesome. I love, I, mean, I love that. It's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love an ambitious multi-cover, multi-covered thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'll just say uh, Hearts and Heads Explode, which was, I think is technically an EP, but it's got like 15 songs. Oh, cool. They're like punk hardcore, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we'll just say the the first song, which is Crooked Finger. Very cool. And I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, which I'm sure you will. Um, <laughs> yeah, six months later, they'll be like, actually, and you'll be like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if you're going to, if you have a comment about a thing we said six months ago, just know we fucking Googled it already, okay? Yeah. If you're listening uh, to an old episode and you want to <laughs> tell us the brand of the air conditioner that we forgot, <laughs> stop it. We, we figured it out a long time ago. Okay. Thank you. Also, we talk about this a lot. I know everybody means well, but if there's like a, a Coke meme or a McDonald's meme <laughs> and you're like, I should send this to them, we, we've we gotten it. If, if, it, if it was posted times. that day, go ahead and send it. If it's, okay, that's if it's, fair. If it's two days old, we, we saw it yesterday. I've got <laughs> Somebody it. Somebody said it to us yesterday. But don't stop, you know? Don't stop, because I know, obviously, people mean well. But, oh, my it's God, fine. the DJ Shredder typo one. If I see <laughs> dude, her again, dude, that one? I'm going to oh blow my, my brains God. out. The best fucking bitch. She makes me hate my favorite man. <laughs> anyway, good pick. Uh, the Repo's Crooked Finger, awesome Chicago, like, like actual hardcore. Mm. I'm yeah. excited to hear it. Never heard him. My next three picks are all from a little place called Massachusetts. You ever heard of it? <laughs> the Commonwealth? Yeah. yeah. You ever heard of the Commonwealth? Yeah, heard of uh, the first of the three is they all ha- have share one thing in common, and that is DMG. melodic vocals over hard-ass riffs. Two of them I'm are noticing- more obvious, but this first one. Mm-hmm. Fronted by Righteous Jam's founder, Mayan's television show creator, Elgin James. Mm-hmm. Four, five, four. Big block. Wow. Wow. 
You fuck with that? That I've never heard of. Oh my god, you're gonna love deep, that's a deep cut. It is a deep cut. Uh, I would listen to the song Born Human. Yeah, you'll see exactly what I mean. Got it, dun, 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 dun. exactly what you're looking for, riff wise, from a guy like me, like what I'm, what I'm into. And then his voice starts, and you'll hear the hook will hook you. Hook. It's a straight up like you're gonna be like, God damn, that's a million dollar hook right there. And he's got tons of those. Yeah. And then he went um, on to form Righteous Jams, which ran shit. That's an underrated band. That's I almost put him on the list, but I, I thought Mental said the statement even. You know? Yeah, no, that's good. Um, it's crazy for you to pick a band that I had never even heard of from an era where, like, that was the mecca. Like, Boston was it at the time. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I haven't heard of them is kind of crazy to me. Well, they were a little bit before that time that you. But still, you know. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> they were a the little they were a little bit before that time that you suck off. Oh. They were from the time that I suck off. I got you. Guzzle. Um <laughs> uh, should I just do, do the other two now? Yeah, should yeah, I get them out of the yeah. way? They're easy. It's only Living Witness, obviously. Yeah. And Sam Black Church, obviously. Okay. Because you can't tell gotta, me they're not underrated in the scope of the world. They're they're regional bands. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say when I first heard Only Living Witness, I was like shocked that they weren't more popular. That they weren't like a worldwide famous phenomenon. Brother can sing. Brother and can like, sing. Usually that's That's it. That's like a, a shoe in, you know what I mean? It's a it's a, again, it's a timing thing. Cause it's cause j- after Only Living Witness, Jonas started a band called Milltown. They were picked up by a, a, like a major, major label, and it was just a red tape thing. It was like Universal or War- something huge had the fucking guy that produced Dirt, and it just never came out. Uh, and it's incredible. Sam Black Church could draw 5,000 people today in Boston, you know? No problem. They could announce it today and draw 5,000 people tomorrow. That's fucking crazy. It's crazy. It's just a thing. So for Only Living Witness, obviously, I don't want to say listen to Promo Reform because you've already done that. So listen to... What is it? Total particle reversal or something on uh, from from Innocence, the second record. Oh, um, I don't know that one as well. See, it's I know awesome. It. I've Freak to Law, it. listen to Freak Law, dude. Hard ass shit. Sam Black Church, listen to Infernal Machine. Because I already recommended you something from the right. other one. I want to listen. You, I'm recommending you something from the OG, the Purple self titled Infernal Machine. I want to get into Sam Black Church. You're going to like them because it's it's try. it's straight up like misfits quality shitty recordings, you know, like yeah. other than the one I sent you, the thou shall not kill you, shall thou shall not, whatever, whatever one sounds amazing because it was yeah. like demos for a major label thing. Um, but the other ones are sound crazy, but are so fucking awesome. And it's cool. That makes it like, oh, this is I have to like decipher how dope. This gotcha. Is. Yeah, I got you. Uh, and Infernal Machine was the song. That was the first song I heard by them, and I was like, oh, this is this is crazy. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whew. That was a good pick. And I feel my, like me, me doing mine in bunches will will kind of le- make our lists about the same length. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that, was, that all made sense. Yeah. Mine, we talk about them all the time. They are the flagship band's band. Hit me. Oh. Fucking underrated. Oh, yeah. Ring the fucking worm, bro. The worm, dude. The worm is absolutely underrated. Like, they are so fucking cool. Yeah. They're an awesome band musically, aesthetically. Yo, check this out, dude. Hit me. We talk about how hard the three album thing in a row is. Oh. Promise Birth is Plain, Birth is Pain Justice. <laughs> Birth is Plain, yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> My baby's is a plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo. Well, forget Justice. about that. Promise, yeah. birth is pain, justice for place. Yeah. Go I get the with fuck Venomous out of design. Oh, like, Venomous Grand, dude. There's a song on Venomous where, uh, oh God, where is it? it's one or it's track one or two where the part is just on the I China. I think it's the first song. It's so hard. Ringworm is excellent. They are 
such a perfect blend of what I love about the two major genres that make hardcore. Yeah. As we know it. Yeah. Um, excellent recordings. The promise. The promise sounds. It's so awesome way. how shitty it sounds though. Yeah. But, but then you go to the demo and it's like perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> Frank, Frank, insane. what happened there? <laughs> well, we'll get to the bottom. Frank, of that. Frank, if you're listening, what happened? Furnace has the coolest, like most consistent voice. Oh, he's he's the he might be like the best singer. <laughs> Dude, he does the fucking this house. Like he does that. Yeah. That's just him talking. Yeah. It's like, okay. It's crazy. Awesome. Love Ringworm. Um I'm gonna say House of Hell. Yeah. If you can if you can find the Terror Ringworm split version of it, mm. that's my personal favorite. But the one on Justice is also incredible. I'm with you. I feel like we have to make we have to make like an illegal Plex server. I think, ooh, for people to listen to our stuff. But that would be fun. There's all kinds of that. Uh, we, I don't know that we could get away with that. Um, yeah. That's an incredible pick because you're yeah. right. It you they know are, it, my instinct is to be like what ringworm, but yeah, they're uh, they're absolutely underrated. Great pick. Just, yeah, yeah. Especially because like people will say like. Cleveland hardcore and ringworm doesn't like i don't think well i i mean i feel like, i feel like integrity ringworm are are fucking ben franklin and george washington you know yeah 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 two two yeah. the two great presidents <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i that's what i think and then i go oh yeah one life crew and in, in cold blood mm-hmm. yeah um Great pick. Thank you. Love that pick. I'm obsessed with that pick. Uh, my next two are grouped together because I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure the same guy sings in both. I don't know why I didn't confirm it, but I didn't. Uh, Agents of Man and Train of Thought. Oh, okay. I never got into Agents of Man, That's but crazy. they toured with Marauder. Marauder. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw them. I don't think I ever revisited. It's crazy. I don't think so. It's the there's an EP that is uh not as polished and produced that I really like. EP01. First song is called Headless. Okay. Uh, but the LP, Count Your Blessings. You will hear this today and be like, why? Why weren't they touring with like Shadows Fall and Kill Switch and and like the biggest band, the biggest metalcore bands? Because it is it is like certified metalcore in a way. Yeah. In yeah. the sense that like they're hardcore songs were with a big melodic hook. Uh, and then like the, the melodic, ri- the, they're doing all the like, nah, 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 all the, you know, type riffing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where you hear that and go, Oh, they're, they're, that's that thing. Uh, but they do it in a, from a perspective that doesn't corn it up to me ever. Do you think that's because they were kind of trailblazing or just because it's it's written well? Probably a little bit of both. Yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. the train of thought has hooks and stuff too. So they they it's like the it's like one what's a a triptych? Is a diptych a, a two triptych? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. A triptych is like a three piece piece of art, right? Like a like a three layered piece of art. Okay. Is it diptych? Would that be two? Oh, you know what's so funny? That's why that app is called Diptych. So it is? Yeah, it is too. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll yeah. see. Uh, let us know in six months <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after I Googled it six months ago. But the, yeah, it's kind of, it's uh, the evolution from Train of Thought to Agents of Man is very cool. And uh, I would recommend e- uh, Headless from the first EP, which they did re record on the LP. And. Blood Money on the LP because it's the most melodic song. Oh, so if you like that and then you listen to the other ones, you're gonna be like, "Oh shit, <laughs> they're hard as fuck." Like Repercussion <laughs> is another. If you listen to Repercussion, it's a pure hard song. Okay. Uh, but yeah, two bands that I love. Oh, Self Inflicted uh, is the song for Train of Thought. Sorry. Oh, okay, gotcha. I'm gonna go um, to your coast. Oh, with a band. Of of like the the no warning era that didn't really 
I don't think really popped called Violent Minds. Oh. Violent Minds? Are they from California? Yeah, they're from San Francisco. Oh. See, that's a different. I said coast. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> cool. Uh, San Francisco, San Jose. Yeah. Nice. Um, They were just kind of around during like, it's funny. I thought, I thought because of who was in it, I thought they were Canadian. Mm-hmm. But they're not. But like, Shark Attack, No Warning, mm-hmm. that kind of era. Um, the song's called Know It All. It's the first song off of the Violent Minds self-titled EP. Okay. More just like straight hardcore that is still hard, mm. you know, which is I'm finding is like a lot of my list it's that your, is like kind of a lost art. Yeah, but it's it's, it's this it's, era it's a where mashable it's, it's, band it's, without. That's, Chug parts, see, that's you know? my that's my beef a little bit. Yeah, and, I know, and, and I know. that's how I felt as a teen, being like, "Why aren't they doing it?" Yeah, not I'm not talking about violent, violent minds in, no, 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 in particular because no. they're sick. I think I've played with them in the past mm-hmm. few years, um, but I I don't like when when bands are half hard. So like all these bands <laughs> trailblaze this era of of like a different kind of mosh part. So the yeah. next generation thought that like mosh parts were taboo or something. Right. No, just I, stopped I, doing I totally it. get that. But you know what I think is like is like killing time. Yeah. They got more they got full mosh parts though. You know? But not like chug parts. Not like but that, you know what I'm saying? That might I, just, I, I just be I, the air. That's they I didn't just see exist. It in that vein, is sure. what I'm saying. I don't. I don't see it that way. I see I see because because of what happened between killing time and violent minds. Mm-hmm. It became a conscious decision to not do those things. I got you. And that, I don't that created, like, melodic hardcore took from that and was like, oh, we're not doing that. And became the active. antithesis Ringing. of what my ears be wanting. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, my mind's sick. What's the, what's the song you're picking? Um, no at all. Nice. Off the self-titled EP. Nice. I'm, ex- I'm, I'm, I'm excited... To delve into your picks, Bo. <laughs> Don't lie. I'm Don't not lie to the children. because these are you're you're picking like a lot of the stuff either I missed, yeah, or was was too up my ass to get into at the time. Which is why. So this is exactly why. If I can t- blow our own asses, blow it up is is why I think we work well. Yeah. Because minor threat were, and push button warfare. That's why. That's, th- that's why what the I'm saying. Right? Sense, By yeah. the way, had this shirt when I was 13. Still fitting it. Nice. Um, my 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 point being is like I was so concerned. I say this all the time that like when I was a kid, kid on the radio, I like I loved Metallica. Right. But then I got into punk and hardcore, and I thought like I'm not allowed to like metal. I have to be like into punk and like fast hardcore, like blah blah blah. Opened up Give Blood, and a dude in Bane is wearing a Master of Puppet shirt, and I was like, oh, this is allowed. I can like Metallica. Yeah. So like I was so concerned about what was, there were more there were many more rules when we were young. Yeah, or at least I believed there were, right? Yeah. Cuz like really who gives a shit? Right. And but, that's and that's the, like what you're talking about. Yeah. is what I had a problem with as a kid. Cuz I was like why are the new bands not doing the things my favorite bands do? Gotcha. You know? Mhm. Like I my my in my mind is like why why doesn't Violent Minds sound like Marauder? You're like, well, I, I can't spin kick. To I can't, I can't do it. Which, and yeah. I'm, that's just me being an idiot, obviously. No, yeah. But, but that also, that's me subliminally being like, oh, I like what I like. Yeah. Right. And that's okay. Right. But right. everybody well, should I, sound I, like Marauder. <laughs> yes, it's <that's> true. <laughs> Except for this next man on my list, bro. Ooh. You ready for this? Yeah, yeah, I am. <sighs> <laughs> Let me take you back in time here. I'm ready. The first Stop. time Twitching Tongues ever toured the United States. Uh, not true. The second time Twitching Tongues ever toured the United States. It was the Sleep Therapy Tour, which was booked with just by ourselves with a little regional stint in Canada mm. with this band, who up to the shows, I was like, yeah, they're cool. Okay. But, Bo, let me tell you. <laughs> Yes, sir. All it takes, if you see this band, Wisdom and Chains, one mm. time, 
by the end of the set, you know the words to every song. <laughs> Dude, they got choruses. It's they crazy. Got In 30 know. minutes, they can make anyone a fan. Wisdom in Chains from Pennsylvania. Where? <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. I fucking love you. Um, I I was an overnight Wisdom and Chains fanatic. Ahead. Because I think the shows were uh, Twitching Tongues, Strength for a Reason, Wisdom and Chains, and Lifeless, which is okay. badass, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was just like, man, this is the... Is this what touring is like? This is the best. <laughs> uh, but Wisdom and, and Strength for a Reason is like, they're, uh, there's a band, I, I guess I could, there's a band from Retaliate, uh, called Retaliate yep. from California, who's also on my list. Okay. Um, I didn't pick a song for them because I love, the whole first three records are perfect. Uh, so just listen <laughs> to all three. Uh, Strength for a Reason and Retaliate are kind of like the East Coast and West Coast equivalents of one another. Gotcha. Retaliate is uh, fronted by Zach Nelson, who played in a band called In Control, and now does oh, the one, 185 Miles South podcast. Listen to them. Give them a listen. Uh, fr- friends of the show. Yeah, In Control does rock. Zach is the fucking man. Retaliate and Strength for a Reason are these regional phenomenons. Uh, and Wisdom and Chains, they, they, they broke the regional gap. You know, they broke the regional threshold. Um, I, I, I don't think that they've written a bad record and I think they keep writing their best record. Okay. There's a song called mathematics. First of all, chasing the dragon is like the hit. Okay. Where when they played that, I was like, this band is fucking crazy. (laughs) Uh, but there's a song called mathematics from like, uh, that's new to me, but it's like a 10 year old record at this point that is straight up like a Danzig ballad. Whoa. It's unbelievable. Okay. It's like a love song. It makes me, it made me cry the first time I heard it. Cause I know this man just loves his wife, you know? <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> yeah. So wisdom chains, Joe, if you're listening, I love you too. <laughs> See, I think that that is a very, that's a, another example of, you would say that and someone would go, what are you talking about? But it's, but it's true. I they're think not- they're, 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 like we played over them in Europe. Right. I don't think that should have been the case. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 too good for that. Yeah. I and love, I'm sure today that would be different because I they love rock. the bands that carry entire states. Oh. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, and it's purely like a labor of love. Yeah. <laughs> and just people just like love this one band. And I'll get to I'll get to one from Illinois that yeah. I, I never talk about. <laughs> um, but, like, I love that concept of, mm-hmm. like, everyone going, I don't know, if it wasn't for this band, right. I think Strength for a Reason is probably... Oh, big time, dude. The one, right? For Strength them? for a Reason, uh, Crutch. Oh, man, I should have put Crutch on here. Shit. <laughs> Just time? Uh, yeah. Richie Crutch, obviously, plays guitar in Wisdom and Chains as well. So they're all, you know, they're... Yeah, There's yeah. a cross pollination there of 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 guys, and the singer of Strength for a Reason, the biggest scariest man you've ever seen, is mm-hmm. actually the nicest guy to ever. He'll come up to you and he'll ask you about your entire life. You know, one of those. <laughs> yeah. Where he comes up and he's like, "Hey, man, I'm Carl. Tell me about your what entire you, life. What do you want? What are your dreams? Yeah, man, and just feel at ease. I feel at ease. All right, uh, I got a good one. Hit me, dude. And I think, and you're gonna. This is gonna pop you. The Hope Conspiracy. They're coming right up on my list. So All right, great beautiful. Pick. Uh, did you choose early or older? We'll do. Uh, we'll do, we'll older, do older. Oh, oh, I did too. No, I'm sorry. Let's do, yeah, no, I meant you, older you, or newer. You do. You do. You pick okay. it. Okay. You uh, said it I'm first. Do, you pick the song. Okay, I'm gonna do Hope Con from Cold Blue. Oh, Truth and Purpose. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're picking Truth and Purpose again. I didn't. I never even picked. I, they they were never one of my picks. Right. But they're on that song is on the best breakdowns playlist. Ah, fuck. I didn't cross check that. Okay. Sorry. No, it's a great. Uh, I mean, obviously. I'll, I'll pick another that's, one for the actual. That's the hit. So, I mean, it yeah, should yeah, be yeah, on yeah, here. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I would pick uh, Hang Your Cross from Death Knows Your Name. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Dude, the, the pit is like <laughs> open E. 
It's like, yeah, da -da, yeah. Ga, 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 and it's somehow so hard. So hard. Uh, the whole conspiracy are fucking awesome. Yeah. Do you like EndNote? Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. But it, it's um, like lyrically... I fucking gored in half, dude. There was either a, a poster or it was a gateful. I don't remember exactly, but it was like a huge upside down cross. Yeah. And it was fucking very sick. I, li I live <laughs> for that shit. People are so sick of that, but like, man, there ain't a DSI lyric. You know the Antonio Banderas, the gif that I love, the of looking course. at the computer? That's every DSI song to me. Pardon this interruption. It is whatnot time. Whatnot. Oh my god! I'm a believer. I'm obsessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. You know, four months ago, five months ago, I didn't get it. Then we well, started. The doing concept it. was a little lost on me, right? Yes, kind of. That got it's it's Twitch meets Cameo meets eBay. It really is. It is the it is the best place to buy and sell any kind of memorabilia. Real realistically, mm -hmm. Lars Fredrickson is on there. You know who else is on there? Brody King, my favorite person. <laughs> Dan Housen. All ego, Ethan Page. Wow, uh, tons of people. You know, the tons of different products, toys, cards, games. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now it's the best place to buy and sell hardcore, vintage memorabilia. Yeah, realistic. yeah of course, shirts, vinyl. So Give be me. sure to join us at the end of every month. I think our our policy is pretty much the last Friday of every month. Yeah, is Hardlore Whatnot Day. It's the, <sighs> it's going to be the only place where you can buy certain Hardlore shirts. Uh, you're, we, we're going to always have old stuff from our bands and our friends' bands, records, rare stuff. You can come, you can bid, you can hang out, and you basically watch a two-hour-ish live hard lore episode that is never seen again. Mm -hmm. And we have we typically do around 10 items each, so that's a lot of stuff you can get. We do giveaways. We do all kinds exactly. of stuff. Love so that. Uh, click the link in the description for 15 bucks off your first purchase. And it's also manscape time, baby. We've we been scaping men for oh. months now. <laughs> we, and we got our packages coming. I can't wait. Oh, that body we got wash. Some body wash coming. I'm staying thick as thieves with the crop yeah. preserver. And yeah, the you're reviver. preserved and I'm revived. Yeah. I'm I I'm living deliciously since <laughs> since Manscaped came you into are. my life. You know? Black Philip living life. It's, that's me, man. I smell the great. Taste of butter. I smell yeah. good. I'm like balls are barely balls, you yeah. know, might as well be my elbow at this point. <laughs> it's all one thing. And that's thanks to manscaped. So I, use code hard for 20% off plus free shipping. Yes. I was just going to say, I, we, you know, we kind of have a golden ticket. I've tried a myriad of products. I've yet to f even find a thing where I'm like, yeah, huh. like everything. I'm like, Oh, this smells great. Like every, every single time. manscaped product that we get sent is like, yeah, I could use this forever. <laughs> you yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, I so. could keep this in stock for the rest of my days on mm -hmm. Earth. Mm -hmm. So we hope that you feel the same. And you know, we're we, our goal is to get you twenty percent off those things and free shipping. <laughs> free shipping. So you use code Hardlore. You scape your man. If you you know you buy it for your partner, your ex, mm -hmm. if you want to fuck with him, you dad, know? your dad. I sent my dad an extra lawnmower that I that I had gotten from Manscaped. Lord knows dad's balls be stanking. And this <laughs> okay. is the only remedy. Okay? Ball dad Bo's dad's <laughs> balls needed this. <laughs> and thank God his son has a podcast where he could make that a reality. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Back to the episode. Uh, the first time I saw the Hope Conspiracy, they opened the first like real hardcore show I went to. Mm-hmm. I talk about it. It's the yeah, band. and you did and hope hope conspiracy opened, and I'll never forget that uh, singer just walked like he was in the back of the room and just like walked through the crowd. Ooh, Roman just like shield style, dude, and and like just like took off his coat and just started singing. And I just remember thinking, because again, this is like actually my second hardcore show. Just remember thinking like that's fucking sick. that's a cool like, guy. He just like yeah, that's a cool yeah. guy. Yeah. You know? Um. So the hope con I think is. Very underrated. Big time. Agreed. Um, Naraj, who plays guitar for them and Suicide File and a bunch of other bands, um, is like awesome. <laughs> Just like in a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of bands that you for sure heard of and uh, rocks. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. My next pick. 
Now that Side by Side has announced their reunion two days after we talked about how they have have are the last band to not reunite, there's one left, Bo. One left, you said? There's one there is there's a band that has not reunited. Are we gonna ruin it? Why can't we bring anything like Hardlore will never make a million dollars in a year. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't we bring good shit around? Um, I, you know, this is a thing where if they did reunite, I'd be front and center. Okay. I'm ready. The band is called Demise. <laughs> the greatest hardcore shirt of all time. Demi- the Demise shirt. They're the last man. They haven't done it. I think what the singer just sang a song with Combust at the yeah. the being yep. bl- the B and B bowl uh, at the B and B bowl, yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> which I had this on my list and then saw that and I was like, God damn it! I fucking manifested another one, you know. <laughs> but they're they're they have yet to reunite. But this is one I would welcome mm. because the kids need to know. Mm. I don't think they're on streaming. But no, I don't think so. Disgrace recorded a cover of The Dawn on True Enemy. So I'll put that in the playlist, and that'll be your intro to Demise. And then you can go, oh, shit, this is what they're this good? Okay, I'll go listen to the rest. Gotcha. Yeah. That's great. Um, who Combust did another song with somebody. What was the other one? I don't know. It looked awesome. Oh, they did fucking uh, set it off, I think. That was, I think that was Painter Tribute. Oh, excuse me. You're absolutely, you're absolutely yeah, right. Which is badass. Yeah. And that was also fucking sick, yeah. Fuckers look badass. Simple. <laughs> yeah, you're right. What's it your next one? My next one, I think you'll like. Oh. <laughs> you might have heard of them. It's a band called Disgrace. Is it really? Yeah, I think Disgrace is wow. like, like a hugely underrated band. Yeah, they're way too good. <laughs> way... That was way the problem. Too good. That was the problem. Is that they yeah. were they were way too good in an era where people wanted shit that sucked. So, I, I, <laughs> this was the this was one I wanted to pick something off of True Enemy, and this was one where I like I had a hard time. Yeah, picking a song. Dude, they're too. They're, I'm their biggest fan for one. Dude, yeah. So I, you know. I, Taylor sent me True Enemy before it was out, yeah. and I remember like driving in in Casey's shitty fucking Chevy Aveo and mm-hmm. like blasting it to try and hear everything that was going on because we were on the highway, yeah. just like like obsessing over it. Excuse me, I love Disgrace. Seeing them at for the children was like awesome. It was, and and I, I thought under- it wasn't going to happen. You know, yeah, I understand why Taylor from Taylor's perspective he doesn't ever want to do it again. You know, because. Disgrace is like this unbelievable. It's every song is amazing. Every single one. Yep. First record, songs of suffering into true and the split, which split with harness, which was completely re-recorded on the LP. Every song is good. And at for the children, it was like he was trying to get his new band over, mm-hmm. and it was really like no, they hadn't played in ten years. So he's like, I'm not going to convince these kids to to listen to my my old band that I throw up every time I sing for. Uh, (laughs) But Disgrace is is one of the most perfect pound for pound discographies of all time. Dude, yes, there's not a bad song. Not one (laughs) bad song. Hard ass pits all around. Taylor's best lyrics. One of my favorite um, tie ins of all of of Taylor's stuff is using that same acoustic guitar. But yeah, it's, for twitching. Yeah, yeah. For, it's the same I like, one. I love that. And like, I know it's the same. You can tell it's the same one. And it's really just because it's the one we had. It wasn't yeah, for yeah. any other reason than like, well, that's our guitar. That's what we got. <laughs> it's fucking sick. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I love that. I, I just think that's like a, a cool yeah. um, tie-in. Our, our $500, uh, I don't even remember the brand, acoustic guitar. Yeah, I think uh, it's still like, the only one we got. Taylor, we got to get another <laughs> acoustic guitar. <laughs> Hey, what? Um, <laughs> just remind me because I think I have the wrong song. What's the the one with the gun 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 gun? That's gun, that's gun, uh, gun. the first song. That's true. True enemy. enemy yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, cool, perfect. So dun, that's dun, the song. Dun, 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 dun. I would pick. <laughs> I like Concord too. Dude, Concord is fucked. I might pick Concord. 
Love it. Big fan. Great pick, Big, Bowen. It's so underrated. Yeah. So underrated. Not Shit, after like, today. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, is, like, they have... I wonder if... And this is obviously just spitballing, but I wonder if, like, they should have been on metal tours if they were ever going to, like... Doing yeah, and and you know. I think maybe Twitching Tongues existing was the problem. Yeah, for, for sure. Of course, like we got in their way basically because it was sure. like they they could have done all the tours we were doing and probably been better received, which is crazy. So just just you know, yeah. bi- biologically speaking, <laughs> um, it is what it is, and that's fine. I'm I'm comfortable with that. Uh, as their biggest fan, I can say that objectively. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My next pick. And again, you may think I'm crazy. You may think, Colin, how could you say this? But death threat should be as big as hate breed. Dude, I almost put death threat on mine. Didn't because I was sure you were going to. Dude, you like have to. I have you're to. Ob- you're, yeah, you're required. Oh, I've, I've got a geographical obligation, but also a scientific obligation because... How how are you gonna l- hear last days in peace and security and tell me that they're not fucking master killer tier? You know. They, so what's what's the trinity? It's death threat, hunter demons, hate breed, hate breed. They, and it, it's not that they, yeah, it's not that they are lesser. It's just that the others are so very good. It's just different. You know I mean? they, they all bring something different to the table. Hate That's breed, very true. Hate breed perfected, like music, <laughs> hardcore. You know, yeah. yeah. Hunter Demons is the scariest band in the world. And and also, I'm just uh, without the stigma of the term metal core. Yeah, you know, what I mean? just like perfected it. I mean, like repeat process and shit. That's that's metal core done. Yeah. The way God intended. The way yeah, 100, right. 100 demons intended. Right. 100 of them. And Death Threat is the the perfect blend of, uh, and we, I, I compare, it's Hate Breed and Youth of Today, Youth of Today together. Wow. Which is like yeah. these, these, these hard-ass songs, but with these lyrics that are not used to, uh, they're not divisive. No. They're not used to divide. Right. They're used to unite. But also with the the you know the personal side of it, the fuck you side of it. What song are you gonna choose? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy that I have to pick a song. Yeah. It was really hard for me to pick Never Again for Best Breakdowns because it was like, what do I? I mean, but here's the thing: there is a possibility that somebody listening to this has never heard Dead at Birth. Do you, you know? think so? Yeah. There's like 30,000 people a week listen to this show. One of them has not heard Dead at Birth. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, you're right. So I'm going to put Dead at Birth on the playlist. I mean, it is an all-time great It is a perfect hardcore song. It's a, is it a top, it's a top 20, I would say for me personally. Easy. I know you'll say higher, but. No, I would say top 20 is fair. Like lyrically amazing, part-wise amazing. Whew. Perfect song. That terror cover, dude. That's yeah. the Fury was. That's one of the best so moments fun. of my whole life. It was just I only saw my boys. You know? Yeah, so fun. Gorgeous. 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 All right. It's a great pick. Thank great you. pick, Colin. Thank you. What's your next um, pick? my next pick. I I I'm so sure you don't like this band. A little band called Dag Nasty. Oh, I do, for sure do not. Have you ever listened to Yeah, there's song? nothing for me here. Yeah, yeah. And and I know you're not being negative. No, you're no, being no. honest. There's nothing. For it's just honest. not for me. It's not. I'm not. I think there's yeah. a difference. We have to learn. There's. There is a difference between this sucks and it's not for me. You know, dude, that's a perfect way to put it. This sucks is is like okay, fuck you. You're my enemy for life. Yeah, that's like offensive. Or like, and I don't like this. Is like, yeah, that's, why, that's okay. It's just not for me. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Very good. There's a difference. Um, Dag Nasty is catchy punk rock Mm -hmm. which is and again is kind of proto pop punk that's kind of yeah travis barker's got the yeah he's got the rocker yeah amazing 
when I when I like realized that's what it was, because mm-hmm. I was a huge Blink guy. Mm-hmm. As a kid. I don't know if we ever really talked about that. I was obsessed with Blink One Eight Two. So I knew what that tattoo was, and when I found out about Dag Nasty and that the singer of DYS sang on "Can I Say," mm. Dave Smalley, who has one of the first known straight edge tattoos, mm. it all all came together for me. So you're <laughs> what you you were like? Okay, I f- you were looking for straight edge lore, and yeah. that brought you to stuff. You'd be like, "Oh, yeah. they're straight edge," so I have to. Dude, as, as silly as it sounds, that American Hardcore book. Mm-hmm is like awesome (laughs) it's got interviews uh with all the all the heads right peter Steele's in it right you know it's got like everybody kirk hammett's in it right it's got like dave small and all the boston guys and there's a whole thing on straight edge and misfits and bad like all the shit that i wanted to know and it was very um it was just very instrumental for me but dag nasty Makes me want to skateboard. I, I never could. <laughs> Makes me want to get out there. It's a summer record, you know. Oh, um, I'm gonna choose the song "Circles." Okay. So fucking catchy. A lot of fun if you're into any kind of punk, any anything catchy, melodic. Mm. It's a it's a really it's a good record. Yeah, I'm, more, I think I'm more of a winter music man, so. You know? <laughs> You really are, I really but I think am. it's underrated. How often are people talking about Dag Nasty? Oh no, Dag it's, Nasty it's shirts? almost yeah. never. Almost never yeah. do you see it. That's it's my pick. That's a good pick. It is a great. Uh, it is honestly a great pick because okay. you're right, and we should disagree. And that's not that I disagree at all. Of course, because we should not be fucking regurgitating the same things. It'd be boring as shit. It'd be boring as hell. Well, there's got to be something for everybody in these playlists. And yeah, I'll tell you, yeah, that that's kind of my goal, right? Yeah, I'll tell you something that. <laughs> Is is for sure for for everybody, whether they know it or not. Okay. Little band <laughs> called Into Another. Oh, so underrated. So underrated, dude. dude. What a pick! Why aren't they bigger than Metallica? I don't know. Why aren't they t- supporting Rush? You know. I sing. Nine, put, nine, nine. put running into walls on right now. But again, again, one of the great, one of the great China symbols of all in all <laughs> music. <laughs> Dude, I can't. <laughs> if I pick up a bass, <laughs> it, it, it's 50 50. It's either that or it's. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, fucking best wishes. Um, the only one. Yeah. That's it. I'm playing one of those two things. Tell I, me about. I gotta learn running into walls. Then, so I can <laughs> it's really easy. And then it's just an octave. Very easy. But tell me, is that the song that you're picking? Yeah, I'm picking running into walls. Or got, uh, or William, which is my first name. You know. Oh my goodness. Sheesh. I What's will. The, s- what? I was gonna say the the second song on Ignorious. Uh huh. <laughs> Peter so Moses, fun. Moses is king, dude. So guitar player. Awesome. Into another is excellent. It's a perfect I'm, band. Um, yeah, the Omens EP, which was like their big comeback record, which is damn like eight years ago now, is Master Killer Tier EP. Wow. 100%. Um, I'm going to piggyback off that. Do it. And I'm going to I'm gonna do the other fucking Richie band. Oh, yeah, that's it's a fair. Little band, little band called Underdog. I think Underdog is super underrated. Big time. When I first kind of heard about them, I think our, our friend Rick told me about them, and he was like, you love the Misfits. Mm-hmm. You love the Misfits because they were doing something in this like tone, but in a different way, you should love underdog for the same reason Interesting is how he explained it to me, which is kind of like, yeah, he like cracked yeah. a code in your mind. He really kind of did. And, and then with the tie in with Richie and youth of today and fucking, yeah. you know, everything else, it was like, Oh, it's great. So I'm going to choose back to back just because it's like kind of the, the track. 
but it's also like a really good intro, I think, into into. And you, like and you put you put mass movement in, in breakdowns too. Yeah. So yeah. they should have a, a good idea of what underdogs vibe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then also it's like if you dig back to back, listen to all of underdog. If you yeah. dig Ignaris or uh, I'm sorry, running into walls, listen to all of fucking oh my God. Uh, into another. Richie's God. Richie, if you're listening, you're the best singer of all time to ever live. Great job. Oh, that was your pick. That you did me. underdog. Okay, yeah. well, you're going to love my next one. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. You sure? I'm, hold on. F- yes. From Chicago, Illinois. Are you stealing my fucking number one? <sighs> oh, Come I'll on. save it. Then you can, I'll let you have it. Thank I'll you. let you have it. All right. I'm literally saving that for number one. All right, I'll let you have it. Then from <laughs> New York, <laughs> <laughs> maximum penalty. That's a really good choice. That's a very good choice. Which record? Okay, well, yeah, right. I, I would say, I would say, could you love me? That would be my pick. Mm-hmm. It's, it is like. Top one of my favorite songs of all time. Any genre, no problem. I could put it on any time. I'm fired up. So it could go Return of the Mac. Would you love my me? way, Frank Sinatra? <laughs> could you love me, Master Killer? You know, like it's like <laughs> that. But it's not on streaming. So what? Life and Times is on streaming, right? I believe so. Go ahead and talk about it. Let me check. What's uh? <laughs> What's that fucking song? It's like track four or five. What's the track list? Demo, yeah, Life and Times. Ways, yeah, this is the this is the one. Plays, Life and Times, Paper Bullets, Fight My Way Back, and The Walls. And The Walls, I think. Wait, no, that's not it. What's the fucking... Uh, it's got to be Life and Times. Even the young for dead. Cry for them. What's the fucking song called? Sorry, Max Penn. I wasn't preparing to say you yet. Threat Assessment. That's the song. Okay. Threat Assessment. Yep. yep. That's we'll on we'll that put that one on there. Uh, this is the one, maybe the best comeback record. Uh, comeback LP of all time. Baker showed us this one time and like couldn't believe that we didn't like, like it. Mm. And I was blown away. Like like it yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Like that we were like maximum penalty. And, right. You know, like. Just didn't, it never had clicked. And right. that one will click. Yeah, yeah, big time. Max Penn, best comeback record ever. Uh, but could you love me? Look it up on YouTube. You're going to be shocked that I like it, maybe, because it's very, it's just pure, like, borderline proto pop punk, you know? Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Could you love me? Could you love? That's a perfect song. <laughs> perfect song. Dude, I'm gonna go. I, I got one for you. Okay. And you gotta you gotta trust me on this. Are this you band not? from Birmingham. Called Bolt Thrower. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, yeah, okay. No, okay. so this is the first one where I think I think you're crazy. Here's the thing. I'm talking about in from a hardcore perspective. Dude, I I, I think that you they're they're pretty rated. No, I I think they're rated for you and your friend group. I think they're rated for me and my friend group. The amount of people who I've had DM me after we talk about them and stuff and mm-hmm. be like, "What other bull thrower record should I check out? I just checked out for those ones. Oil. This is awesome. Mm. Is is more than I ever expected. I don't believe in current hardcore. Mm-hmm. They're Impact, influence, and their um, reach ability. I don't, I don't know if that's a word. Mm-hmm. Uh, of, of like how many people would dig them if they listened to them. I don't really think, I think makes them underrated. I think within metal and death metal, they're obvi- they're like the most rated and well beloved. But a, a good example. Is I think fucking, this is the first one where you're, where they you're are. Off, off my rocker. Yeah, I think you're off your rocker. But I want to. I mean, help. you picked death let, right. let him cook. Let him cook. Because a death threat should be the biggest man in the world. And they're not. Bolt thrower should not. Bolt thrower is. <laughs> I dude, they played Reggie's here. They could sell out anywhere now, right now. 
right they now. They could play anywhere and sell it out. Mind Force played Fourth Crusade. They covered the Fourth Crusade. I think they played War. They, I, I mean, is that what's the first song on Fourth Crusade? The Fourth Crusade. They did Fourth Crusade. They did. I didn't see. Oh, I didn't see the video. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw a video of that. Um, man, them opening with that. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Both like, opening with that was the sickest thing I've ever seen. And here's the thing. In the room, three or four people moshing. This is what I'm saying. I don't think they're quite rated enough. My follow-up point. Maybe you're right. Harm's Way covered the same song, 2011, in Leeds at Outbreak Fest. A couple people moshing. One of whom was Andrew Morrissey. That's on YouTube. It didn't pop off in the UK. Negative. Oh. So my whole experience with hardcore and bolt thrower is like the is shirts like, are out there, but they don't know the tracks. Shirts, the shirts are out there, and then like the people who fucking love bolt thrower are like uh, us. Yeah, people in bands and and shit. I mean, they're better than literally every band that ever made music. You know, the most consistent. Oh. Like, who's more consistent, bolt thrower oh, or crowbar? Oh, you know what I mean? Crowbar is still a band, so it's tough. There to, you go. You know, there you go. but so, um, yeah, I pick ball thrower. I'm going to just do we did powder burns right on the. Yeah. So let's do. Let's do granite wall. No, the kill chain. Oh, the nice. fucking kill chain. Dude. Yeah. Good pick. <laughs> yeah. Great pick. That's that's my pick. I, you sold me by the end there. You had you had me in the first half. Um I'm getting into California now. Okay. Good. I have one in California left. Okay. I don't think you'll pick them though. I'm gonna do them. I'm gonna do them in a little, yep. a little three way. Take me on a, a weekend tour. I'm gonna take you on a weekend tour. First up is a band called Snake Eyes. Oh, dude, very cool. Good demo. Todd Jones, Corey Williams, and Bo Thompson, who sang in Donnie Brook. Oh, his name was Wait, Bo? Yeah. How did he spell it? B-O. He's dead. <laughs> there can be only one. Oh, he'll kill you. <laughs> you will lose. Just kidding. Bro. He runs a... Uh, now. Oh, that's oh, that guy? I don't know if that's... public. Okay. Maybe we'll believe that. Yeah, huh? we'll see. He runs uh, something now. Yeah, okay. he's the man. Um, he, sang, he sang in a band called Lone Wolf after this as well. Uh, but Snake Eyes had two, like a demo and a seven inch. Yeah, uh, I would recommend. I, it might not be on streaming. Let me see. Let me check. Yeah. Yeah, it's on here. Them? Uh, that might not be them. No, it's not. No, I don't think it is. Nope. Oh, that sucks for the listeners that have yeah. to YouTube Snake Eyes. Yeah, they're not on here at all. Uh, but you know, the, the look up the look up the demo and look up the Hellbent record and just listen to both because you're you're hearing some pre nails Todd riffs. Mm-hmm. Corey, the coolest guy in the world, uh, in the band as well, and Bo, the co frontman of Donnie Brook scene. And I remember, like, I liked Donnie Brook, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking that dude's voice was sick. Yeah. And when I found out Snake Eyes existed, I was like, oh, you yeah. know, it was like a, it was perfect. Yeah. That's a good pick. Um, Very underrated. Definitely. Should I do the other two with this? Please do. Okay. The other one is piece by piece. You like have to say them. I have to say piece by piece, man. Yeah. Nick Jet they- put put on for the valley before anybody. You know, born and raised. SFV. <laughs> um, listen to the listen to the intro. Okay. I I showed people in high school the piece by piece intro constantly. And they'd be like, "Is well, how can I hear more of this? <laughs> what is this and how do I get more of it? So whenever we do a best intros episode, that was, was that the lowest rated? Lowest? No, yeah. I think I think the seven inches one was. But um, Oh, yeah, it was seven inch and EPs. Yeah. Piece by piece intro is fucking God tier. And that's the whole record is perfect. Uh, my, my, the, tri- the triptych, the end of the triptych here would be internal affairs. Yeah, I like, loved internal affairs. internal affairs ran shit when I was okay. a kid, and and Corey was 
was an old head for me in a time where like I really needed one, you know, <laughs> he was, a, he was a guide with, and it, like, he was so scary on stage and so welcoming off stage, you know, mm-hmm. but without, without like, you couldn't kiss his ass. Cause he'd be like, fuck you, go away. But if you leveled with him and talked to him like a human, uh, he'd, he'd give you all his time. He's the man taught me a lot. Showed me many things, as did Nick. You know, Nick and I haven't hung out a whole lot, but every time we talk, every he sang on the God's Hate record. He's the man. Um, three bands that were pivotal, pivotal for my upbringing and my my era, so to mm-hmm. speak. Very good. I, I expected piece by piece. Yeah, I expected that. There, are, I feel like that's your what I'm saving for last. Or is there? Would it be internal affairs? No, my 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 last pick is a fun one for for Scott Vogel. <laughs> okay, no, but I meant uh, never mind. Uh, I'm yes, gonna no, say, you're I'm right. Gonna, you're right. You're right. Okay, I see okay. what you're saying. I'm gonna stay in that area. Stay here. A little tie-in, because I, this is gonna be <laughs> stay here. This is gonna be one where I think you're gonna go. What are you talking about? But it's very regional. What are you talking about? Is Carry On. Mm. I ride for Carry On. Underrated now, for sure. Underrated, so underrated now. But went out on top. Dude. This is so cool. Yeah. Well, because what did they have? They had a lifeless plague, the the roll with the punches seven Mm -hmm. inch, and was there another thing? I think maybe a demo. A demo? Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. It's the way to do it. Demo seven inch LP, fuck off. Done. (laughs) Out of here. You're legendary. Um I love Carry On. Mm Mm-hmm. A Lifeless Plague was like, that was um, pretty pivotal for me, I would say. Um, again, that's another example of like fast music with hard parts and straight edge. So that's me. That's all I wanted that's at the he. time. You know? That's he. That's, it, is, it is he. <laughs> um, for the, what did we do? We did Off My Chest? We did Off right? My Chest. I mean, I do putting, I obviously put the playlist on after we made it just to just to hear it. Yeah. Off My Chest is crazy. It's still <laughs> How did, were they allowed to do that as, a, as like a fast straight edge man? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Shin, <laughs> gin, shin. It's, it's so, so hard. It's insane. <laughs> Um, I'll pick a weird one off the sure. LP and it's so much of you, which is like kind of the pretty song. Yeah. But, um, cool breakdown. Sick, like m- kind of melodic, mm-hmm. honestly, but like hard still, which is what melodic bands never yeah, get. Yeah, right? exactly. So gotta give me, you gotta give me all of it or don't give me none of it. <laughs> per- well you feel me? Yeah. Back. That's there's a back of a shirt right there. That's a great pick. Because I like obviously another pivotal man band for me as a lad. Uh, my next pick we briefly mm. talked about a few weeks ago. Okay. But the band that at one point was poised to be the next big thing in Ooh. all in all of extreme music. Black Breath. Dude. Great pick. I put. A uh, good dear mate of the show, Jason, of uh, uh, formerly of Road, onto Black Breath, onto Black Breath, and he like can't believe it. They, it's like you listen to this and you go, "What? Why? Why isn't this everywhere? Mm-hmm. Why isn't at the gates opening for them right now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they should they should come back and they should stay back." Um, I I, de- I just remember seeing them so many times and every it was like. It was like exactly what you want as a musician where every time they came back, there was a hundred more people there. Oh, wow. And it was like, Good. oh, they're yeah. actually doing it. Like they're, they're living the it. dream. Yeah. Uh, and every record was bigger and crazier mm-hmm. and also still had like a hardcore ethos to it. Even though they, you could tell they were like, we got to get out of hardcore and just stick mm-hmm. to metal towards the end, mm-hmm. which is maybe what killed them in a bit yeah. in, in, in a way. That's normally what does it. When you put both feet out the door, yeah, something happens. Yeah, but man, they deserve their respect. They deserve their flowers. The first I met the singer at the Sound and Fury they first played. Yeah, and two thousand nine. 
Yeah. And he was so excited that I liked the band. Awesome. I was like, can I get a shirt in this size? And he was like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> so you let, he was like, so that you. That dude, he can scream too. He's dude, got the, the, the sound check, the, the line check thing he yeah, does. Yeah, the line check is Where insane. he just goes, yeah. For, forever. For like, no joke, a full 40 seconds. He does it until people clap. And I remember it eventually just me being like, <laughs> having to give it to him because it was so crazy. He's um, got he's got that. Some people can do that. Keith, um, formerly of Every Time I Die, can do that. Too. He's just born with just that like, voice. They could just do the thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's amazing. I would pick the What's song the, I Am yeah. Beyond. Yeah. I am, I am, I am. <laughs> Dude. There's also, there's one on the first one. With a fucking crazy pit part in it. What is it called? While you look it up, for for my gearheads out there, mm -hmm. they were a band. That for the, there are bands that are called like HM2 Core or whatever. Mm -hmm. When when HM2 was like real popular, my band being one of them, mm -hmm. they were a band that I would say they were the band that spearheaded that yeah. tone. Them and Nails and were at the same time. Them and Nails for sure. Them and Nails, but they Nails was noisy. Yeah, and theirs was, was very muting. clean. I don't know. And, yeah, so you know it was all nails, there. Nails is muting because Todd's hitting the tuner while singing and playing, yeah. like just like getting the cuts. Yeah. Black Breath had two guitar players with JCM 800s full stacks and using HM2s in an NS, a Boss NS2 in the loop. Mm -hmm. And they were like the first ones where I, I saw them do it and they would stop on a dime, not muting with a tuner. And it was like, okay, they were I'll, doing the send, the send return? Yes. Using oh. the loop of Ooh. exactly, it's just like love me. Oh, you guys return. read the manual. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, them, them and Taylor Young read the manual, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, the song is "Beneath the Crust" on the Razor to Oblivion record. Awesome that's the one record. with the. the yeah. They just do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the part where seeing that live was like. Yeah. That was like, thank you. Dude, that is Thank such, you for sounding like this. For our for this discussion, that is such a good pick. Yeah. That's that's our that's one hundred percent our era. Yeah. And they were part of this paradigm shifting thing yeah. where people in fucking ch champion shirts saw Black Breath and were like, Oh, I'm going to change. I'm going to change who I am. Well, the one guitar player was in uh Go it alone, right? Go it alone. Yeah. Which is quite a change. Huge. To change. go from one to the other. Yeah. Big time. Pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. Very good pick, Colin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's stay in the weird uh, amorphous Todd Jones world. How many you got left? Um, let's see. One, two, three, four. Okay. I have four as well, but one of them is your big one. So. Okay. We'll do do you want me to time. scrap one? No. Yeah, I'll scrap one. But I'm going to, the one that I, this one is good. Okay. Knife Fight. Oh, wow. Knife Fight fucking rocks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think they ever put out anything even remotely bad. No. So you could you could do no wrong. Um, I chose the song Hypocrite off of the self-titled, the one with the dog on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because I think it's catchy, and it, it if I hear it, it's... It's an actual earworm. Mm. It's just like in my head. Awesome singing. Again, it's more of my like more punk hardcore Todd, kind of Todd singing shit. Just <laughs> had he was born with it, man. A wizard. It's crazy. A wizard. He might be the greatest hardcore riffer of all time. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna put his if you're gonna put names out there, it's literally like three gun, him. <sighs> oh my god, three gun. Sean. Florida Frank, sorry. Sorry, excuse me. Florida Florida Frank. TX, Sean. TXJ. You know. Yeah. Wow. TXJ, yeah. But yeah, Todd, he, he's a wizard. And uh, let's, can I just, uh, it'll, this will be fun on Discogs. Let me just look up Todd Todd, Jones. Todd Discogs? Yeah, this is going to go and just, crazy. Just see, let's see what we got. Betrayed, Carry On, Fireburn, Internal Affairs, Knife Fight, Nails, Snake Eyes, Stand Your Ground, Terror. <laughs> pretty good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, knife fight. Knife fight rocks. Very nice. Uh, they had a shirt with a baby on it getting stabbed in the head with a switchblade. My mom made me, uh, or Chris's mom made him get rid of it. I had it for a while, and then I gave it back to him as adults. Oh, nice, because his mom made him get rid of it? Yeah. That was nice of you. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, my next pick, a band that almost nobody has probably ever heard, I think. Mm. So this is the perfect thing. There, there is a band from L.A. now called Dead City. They're like a punk band. Yes. But there was oh. there was a Dead City from Little Rock, Arkansas. Fuck yeah. And they were fucking awesome. They were unbelievable. Dude, Phil was a great guitar player. He's that awesome. It's fucking sick. Uh, uh, they put out an LP called wow. God, da- God Damn the 21st Century. Jeremiah, dude. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing band. What wow. song do I pick? This is this is tough because what a pick. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Colin, that was a I good know. pick. I know. I know. Let's see. Wow. Uh, I want to make sure I get this right because I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the last song is called God, God Damned. And it's like this big epic kind of opus. Yes. Um, but like if you put on the, the, the first song, it's called NBS. And it's just a hard-ass song. Hard-ass, hardcore song. They're kind of like Clevo, like metallic Clevo type yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but the last song is this big fucking opus Kind of melodic, God. but also hard. God damned. God damned. Dead City. I saw them on a whim. They were just, they happened to be on tour by themselves playing at the Cobalt. Yeah. And I went to a show to see somebody else, and I think they opened. Yeah. And blew my ass off. Yeah. We we played with them a few times um, over the years. Amazing. Like, amazing second, band. Second, second song on the record, it, and this my favorite song was Saint of Killers, which is a preacher of reference. Course. Yeah. And that was like a big tie in. Absolutely. Was, I think they were really into preacher. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a few preacher things in there yep. in their uh, iconography, you know? Amazing. Which, yeah. Great pick. I know. Wow. That's true underrated because they're just like, they don't exist. Yeah. yeah nobody. Yeah. Nobody absolutely. Knows. Excellent pick. Yes. Very good band. If you're curious out there, check them out. All right. My second to last one. I mentioned them in the in briefly in the breakdowns thing. Okay. I got to pick a song, and I told myself I would just do it off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I know you don't give a shit about Youth Crew. I do not. It's... I You know, but, like, when you put one of the songs on the things, I listen to it, and I'm normally like, yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Like, Break Down the Walls is perfect. There's an anger... That's that that's be, you can't yeah. deny that that rocks. There you go. So I'm with you. I'm with you there. There you go. Um, so I'm picking Turning Point. Okay. Turning Point are a musicians band. Mm. They're all incredible. Skip could sing. There's like slap bass. The drummer's amazing. Like the band rocked. They're from Connecticut, so. <laughs> um, I think people in Connecticut would argue. Oh, that they're not from Connecticut because yeah. I think they were like rich kids, right? There's a there's a there's a thing, you know. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah, sure. they're from they lived in Connecticut. <laughs> 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 Maybe they were born there. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. No, I I, I totally understand. I you know whatever. Um, that doesn't matter. I'm no, it doesn't. Matter. I'm gonna pick. Uh, you know what? I'll just do before the dawn. It's the opener on. It's always darkest before the dawn. Um, if you are into, God, how do you even describe it? It's, yeah. <laughs> dude, I'm curious. It's borderline prog. <laughs> like it's really weird. I'm sold. The song, <laughs> <laughs> the song, turning point songwriting is very strange. Mm. Um, if you listen to behind this wall, which is like their, their overall discography or anthology or whatever. Which is funny. It's only fucking 88 to 91. They're a very short-lived band. But, like, dude, there's so much. The first song on Behind This Wall is, like, an acoustic, like, pop song with a hard fucking part in it. It's it's awesome. Wow. Um, I love Turning Point. It's not at all like the song I picked on uh, Breakdowns Volume 2. Mm. It, this is more polished. It's it's all... You know what it is, Colin? It is very much in the vein of Into an of into another this guy loves turning point 
<laughs> you haven't found it. But it's very similar to Into Another. Yeah, yeah, okay. Then that's very similar. Maybe I'll give it another whirl. I tried as a lad. I tried as I a teen. It. I tried as a 20. <laughs> and it just, I didn't feel like it was for me. But yeah, I'll try it again now that it's on the, the, the official Hard Lore Underrated Bands playlist. <laughs> yeah. uh, my second to last pick Slam Death Metal Originals. Ooh. In, inspired some of the great, the greatest pit writers ever. From Long Island, New York, Internal Bleeding. Ah, I didn't know they were from Long Island. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, kid. The song that I'm recommending now, now, this is the one where I think people who blindly put on this playlist are going to be like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. The song is called Alien Breed. You're going to pop this on and you're going to go, oh, this is this is what I've been looking for my entire life. Where was this? <laughs> and it was in Long Island, on Long Island, waiting for you in internal bleeding. Um, they're, you know, they're 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 back playing just wherever they played with God's hate in in, uh, in Brooklyn. It was awesome. Really? So internal bleeding, it's time you get your respect. It's time you get your flowers. Internal bleeding influenced so many bands. Uh, that it that I th- I think that the people need to to now give back to internal bleeding. I love that. I think that's good. Me too. <laughs> Fuck you. Hit me. Is it? La- is All it- right. This is the one. I talk about this band constantly. They were on Breakdowns Part One. They are pivotal for Chicago hardcore, for heavy Chicago hardcore, I should say. It's the killer. Um. There wouldn't be a harm's way without the killer. Mm. I once asked John from Weekend Nachos if later Nachos would exist without the killer, and he said no. So, you know, there's we did the Trinity thing mm-hmm. with Connecticut, and then there's the, the Texas one with Power Trip and mm-hmm. Bitter End and Iron Age. For Chicago, I would say of, like, this era, it's the killer, harm's way, and Nachos. Um. They don't play out hardly ever. Okay. Um, True. I once did a really cool mosh move at This Is Hardcore. (laughs) Here it is again. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) Um, But I, I, like, I can't, when it comes to underrated, Mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't think there's any other band that deserves people to listen to them more than the killer. Right. Oh, I mean, he, in terms of just the guys being awesome. Yes. Doing a shit ton for hardcore in Chicago. Yes. Writing unbelievable records after, after, after unbelievable <laughs> record. Yes. It's crazy. Uh, That's the definition of underrated is the killer. They're the best. The, the, when you say that you've seen war crimes and shit committed oh, God. or have committed, yeah. The killer is that band here. War Crime like, HC f- for fucking sure. Far. Yeah. I've seen them cover Slave New World. I've seen them cover South of Heaven. Or may- maybe Mandatory Suicide. I don't <laughs> you, every one. time you bring it up, you can't remember the Slave. Yeah, song. I really so can't. Fun. I cannot remember which one. <laughs> but like just like the scariest, the coolest. Seen Luke literally tell security to chill out, otherwise he's gonna start a riot. Yeah. <laughs> like just like the best shit. I can't put them And then he's up. another guy where you see him after the set and he's like, hey, Bo, tell me about your entire life. Dude, I love Luke. I've known, I, I told the, the first story, right, where we played St. Louis. Yeah. And he was the only one. We knew. So, like, literally since I, Chris's dad drove us to St. Louis because we couldn't drive yet. So we were 14, 15. Yeah. He's always put on for us, always been there. He's the fucking man. Shane is the fucking man. Oh my God. Remus is incredible. You know, Shane, Shane is like the backbone of Chicago hardcore. When we talked about wisdom, about them carrying yeah. or about strength for reason carrying, that's the killer for, for yeah. us. They are Chicago. They are, they are Chicago hardcore. Yeah. They are the guys. I fucking adore that band. I'm going to pick, honestly. Just I, do I, it, dude. I, Just do it. I, 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 I just do true it. failure is like the track. That's the one that gets re- real rowdy. Right. I'm going to pick pills. 
Oh, Pills is Pills is uh Pills the is the opener. Pick. Yeah. It, it, it's so fucking sick. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> that that uh I I played a rumble with them one time and yeah. they played that and it was like oh here's here's all those scary stories I've heard. Yeah, yeah, right. It was awesome. Uh Harvest Way did um what was it? It was it was we played like all of Oh, it was the last Nacho show. This is on YouTube. And we played like old Harm's Way stuff, like power violence stuff. Mm. And we closed with pills, with Luke singing. Oh. And, you know, it's just the, the, the best. They yeah. are the best. <laughs> so please listen to The Killer. They just posted recently new music coming soon. So let's fucking go. Oh, wow. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Legitimately awesome. Well, there we go. Very sick. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, like I said, I had them on my list, and I oh, I'd, dude, that that was, I, and I meant to say a, a really quick like, oh, we fuck with the Youngs, like from our circle, because we love because the you were like the two people on Pacific time who knew of the killer. Oh, we were pitting our little asses off whenever they, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it was like an immediate like, okay, it, it, like yeah, that that goes a long way for us. Yeah. Uh, my last pick. Mm. I want to. Sh- I, I got to shout out Mr. Scott Vogel here because he's been waiting for this moment for for Hard Lord to put some respect on what I can only <laughs> assume is his favorite band ever, <laughs> his favorite hardcore band ever. From Buffalo, New York, Zero Tolerance. They put out. They have like eight songs total. So cool. So cool. Uh, every single one of them a fucking smash hit but one that certainly belongs in the best intros down the line uh, fuel the fire from the fuel the fire seven inch that i think it is on streaming beautiful so that'll be on the playlist um i don't know if there's a terror without zero tolerance I don't know if there's a, a buried alive without without zero tolerance. And it's you like, can do that. Yeah, you can, you there's, can there's some that. dominoes to, to yeah. cross. And it's like terror is like if, if you're talking hardcore, like what like you take like hate breed is beyond, you know? They've yeah. become something else. Turnstile is beyond. They've become something else. Terror is fucking there. We're gonna be a hardcore band until the day that we die. Dude, they are the cannibal corpse of hardcore. That's a great. That's a great comparison. And I, I actually almost put terror on my list just because, like, they are the most rated, the most known hardcore band current, mm-hmm. right? And I still don't think it's enough. Yeah, I, I think they deserve like. But then, like, you can see, they can tour. It's funny that this is talking about a. Ter- it's becoming a terror discussion. But like, yeah. terror can tour with any band. They're on tour with the Black Dahlia Murder right now. And yeah. people that love the Black Dahlia murder who who hear hard, the term hardcore and they're like, fuck that. Fuck that right. whole genre. See Tara and they're like, that's probably the best band I ever saw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, and then it all goes back to zero tolerance. <laughs> so listen to the demo and Fuel the Fire. A, a, a perfect band, a perfect discography. When we have Scott on, I'm sure he can tell us more. I don't I don't I don't have the zero tolerance lore for you. I can just tell you that pound for pound, song for song, they're one of the most underrated hardcore bands of all time. I love that. Which brings us to a close. Yeah. Thank you for listening. These are this is just round one. I could do this all day. Yeah. I I we kind of you jarred a few things in my brain. I cut I like five. I got like five yeah. more on here. So do you, like, want, to, do you want to do more? No, I don't. Okay. We got to do part two. Uh, thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy this playlist. Uh, we hope that we, we, we hope that you discovered some things today. We that's hope that, the goal. That's the goal. And if you already yeah. know all these things, we hope that we rekindled some love and that you're going, Oh yeah, right. Of course. We hope that you're listening to this. If you know all this shit like the back of your hand, we we hope you're listening to this going, yup, yup. <laughs> and that's that. That was that was hard lore this week. We will see you next week. Um don't have we might be this might be a special episode if he'll let us do it. Cause our buddy, our the the great yeah. character 
in the hardcore lexicon uh, yes, yes. is getting married this weekend. And we're going to be there. Our beloved Andrew Morrissey <laughs> of Monster Style, James Bourne, <laughs> Why So Funny, Why So Funny, Jimmy Lemon's fame. He's getting married, getting hitched to our all to our uh, uh, additionally beloved Emily Chancellor, my my actual OG. Hmm. So congrats to them. If we yes. if he, I want to do an episode in our full s- wedding suits. Oh, that's a great idea, dude. Because that would just be so cool. Be so fun. Let's see if we can, we can gather the mini. troops. We could definitely do a mini. Well, let's see. I want it fully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, also. I know we'll we'll probably do ads and add it in, but yeah. gonna be doing whatnot. Yeah, together. Together. We'll be together. So whenever you're listening to this, it'll probably be that Saturday, I think. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. Right? Yeah. That makes sense, right? So a special yeah. Saturday whatnot this week. We will see yeah. you. We'll have some special stuff. We have the really cool logo mashup shirt. Oh, so sick. So thank you all so much for listening. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye bye.